After about 22 hours straight editing, I was pretty tired by the time I woke up Tuesday morning. I think I fell asleep at about 5.30 while I was waiting on my last video to upload. Tanner starts work at about 10 o'clock, and that's when June Pup and I woke up. He was pulling in the driveway as I was headed into the house to go take a shower. From what I can tell, the kids made it home from Magnolia without any problems, although we still need to get this door fixed on Billy's trailer. Tanner went ahead and pulled it off and took it in the garage to start taking some measurements and sourcing materials. In other news, a new throttle cable showed up for motion for Billy's S10, and the kids have still got some work to do on the Falcon trying to get the suspension figured out. Unfortunately, we're still waiting on some parts for Billy to put his engine back together for his Nova, and we haven't yet had time to rewire the 55. I'm still waiting on the transmission to come back from handling from my Monte Carlo, but we've almost got Vicky's 327 ready to go down in her El Camino. And of course, Billy's still working on that 69C10 out in his shop. He's got the 307 pulled out of it, and he plans on dropping the Turbo 350 out of it today. He's already got a brand new Turbo 400 from Dion Vickers ready to go in. What the hell are you doing here? Fixing this mess. I didn't ask you to fix this. I told Tanner to fix it. Yeah, he called me and then said, oh, they said there's only two sizes of doors. Okay, so first off, I didn't call Bucko. He just randomly showed up at the house like he does every morning before he goes anywhere. And before he gets anything done, he goes, well, I gotta run to the farm. So then he pulled the tape measure on it and realized that his size doesn't match either the numbers that they gave him, so. The door measuring, I measured the door the first time and it was close to what the dude said the door sizes were. That's why we use tape measures. We were not going to spend $380 on a door skin, so I wasn't even going to have you guys order that in the first place. So I found the parts up at Rock Auto, but I got to go over there and go retrieve them. Rock Auto? Or not Rock Auto, Rock's Trailer Sales. Robble, robble. So while Tanner and Buckwheat are figuring out how we're going to fix that trailer door on Billy's trailer, me and June Pup are back in the Malibu out of the shop so we can put Addie's car back inside. We're still trying to diagnose this random misfire problem that it's having, and I think Tanner's planning on swapping out the distributor while we're waiting on Buckwheat to come back from Rock's trailer sales with the material to fix Billy's trailer door. I, on the other hand, have some errands to run this morning, and since I've already got the Malibu backed out of the shop, I figured I'd take it in town to give it a bath, since Richard and I got caught in the rain on our way back from Church Boys. While I'm down that way, I also need to stop by Mark's this morning and pick up some parts. So anyway, our first stop this morning is Hebron at the Lancer Car Wash. Now, although I'm not real crazy about the color on the Malibu, I will give it one thing. It's extremely low maintenance and easy to keep clean. Unlike my black Monte Carlo, I can take the Malibu through a touchless car wash and it'll look like a million bucks driving out the other side. After all, the car is painted the color of dirt. And thanks to the ceramic coating that they put on at Jack's Wax for me, the car beads up and sheds water really nicely and it's easy to dry off. Anyway, once me and June Pup got done at the car wash, we made our way down to Buckeye Lake to go visit Mark at the parts store. According to him, my parts bill's gotten pretty high and it's a little past due and Mark is ready to collect. So I'm gonna go down and pay him a visit, pay my bill, and I need to pick up some oil, a filter, and a set of spark plugs for Vicky's 64 C10 while I'm here. He's also wanting to talk to me about working on his 55 Chevy because he's really worried about this grudge race he's locked into with Buckwheat. Well, 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 look who it is. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah, really. I need some spark plugs for my 64 C10. Ooh. I need a case of oil, an oil filter. Uh, I'll think of something else. Hey, by the way, you hit it out of the park with that freaking toaster strudel the other day. Did, I did. I was. You didn't think, you guys probably didn't think I'd have that power manager. I shop. didn't. Yeah, see, I keep stuff like that, toaster strudels and stuff. Not well, just Chevys. You had it there in like 15 minutes. I know. Thing saw, two. I know. I had to fall back on him. I didn't think it was going to happen, but he he, he made it happen. up to the plate. He did. I saw that. I was pretty impressed, honestly. Your parts bills still do, and the 55 is ready. So Shit. We have 30 days. Clock is ticking, just like Jeremy's. What are you Jimmy, talking about? Well, Jimmy Dale's got me laid out with A to Z. Paperwork? Paperwork. Well, yep. I got news for you. I'm filing for discovery. I've been around this block a couple really? of times already. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> So I've struck up a deal with Mark to work off part of my parts bill in trade for tuning up his 55 Chevy. Anyway, by the time I got back to the shop, evidently Buckwheat had dropped off the material to fix Billy's trailer door. 
Tommy was here too. He was out in the new shop replotting the four link in the back of the Falcon. He and his brother still aren't happy with the way the car is performing. Billy's also working on his 69C10. He's got the transmission out of it now and new motor mounts installed in the frame. I think he's also going to go ahead and put a new set of spark plugs in the 64 for me, while Tanner and I are making a trip out to Barnesville to pick up Mark's 55 Chevy. Now, if you remember, a few videos back, I drove out there in the Malibu to visit Mark and his buddy Denny while they were working on his 55 in Denny's shop. Denny was busy helping Mark do some touch-ups on the body, and now that Denny's finished up, Mark's chomping at the bit for me to come out and get this thing and tune it up. What are you expecting me to do here? Well, the carburetors are slobbering all over the place. It's got a little hesitation, and like you said, timing's probably off a little bit. You just want me to go over it and tune it up a little bit? I think we need a little tuning. But what happens if I detune it? Oh, well... What happens if I, I get accused of detuning uh, it? I'll sign a waiver. <laughs> you better go over that with your attorney. Yeah, I'm going to call him tonight <laughs> to have a talk. So... Yeah. Now I rode in this thing the other day, but since then Mark's telling me that it's running really rich. So we're gonna take it around the block and check it out. Oh my God. Take it back there, come on old buddy. <laughs> Got the rubber duck here, boy. Yeah. We're shifting down the hill there. Boy, she's a little rich. Jesus. You're telling me. Cut her hard. She's a little rich, old boy. A little rich. Uh, yeah, a little. It's all right. Blow the cobwebs out of it. I don't know if you can make it around the block. God, mercy. I think you might just want to put her on the trailer, honestly. Yeah, we'll make a short trip around the block. That sounds like a plan. We got a before and after video here. It definitely needs some work. I can feel it. it runs like junk. Damn, this thing will work. A misfire? Well, it sounds like it's got a spark plug hanging out. Yeah! Hell yeah, old boy! Just get the hell out of the way so I can <laughs> go. This is a dangerous area to own a 55 Chevy that drives this bad. Because everything here is on a hill. Like, you gotta be part Billy good to live here. <laughs> yeah. Now, the last time I rode in this car, it smelled like it had race gas in the tank. This time, it smells like straight pump gas, and it's not happy. So we turned around the first chance we could to head back to the shop, because this thing may not make it much farther. This is terrible. It sounds like a tractor. It literally sounds like a tractor. I don't know what's happened to this thing, but it didn't run this bad when I drove it or rode in it. Yeah, it, it, it literally sounds like a John Deere tractor. Put, 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 put. It was at this point I decided I'm gonna kick this thing wide open and see if it cleans up. We fixed it. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Dude, when all eight cylinders lit, oh my God. <laughs> that was a that was a little wild. We got a lot of work to do. I don't think Chumpy had driven this too many times to say that he was ready to race it right now. Listen, at this point, the chicken coop has a shot as it sits. Yes. By the time we got Mark's 55 back to Denny's shop, I wasn't sure if the car had enough power to pull itself up on the trailer. And Mark definitely struggled to load it.
Okay. Alright. Am I good? Put her in gear. I got it. You're barely good. Jesus. Now wait a minute. When you open that door, yeah, I know. be careful because that fender. Let me check it. You're good. Oh, look at that. But what's that mean? You're good. Well, that was a... No wonder I never, never had a trailer. What do you think? Well, as of right now, the chicken coop's got a real good shot. Oh, boy. The well, way it sits. Yeah, well, the way it sits ain't going to be the way it sits here in a little bit, so... Yeah, You've got me in a little bit of a conflict of interest. Well, I know I do, but that's all right. It's, that's all right. That won't hurt nothing. It's all right. Jeremy's already getting a supercharger, so, I mean. You're sweating it, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that ain't going to be. How often do you have two big block 55 Chevys in your shop? So it fired right up this morning and it didn't really sound that bad when we pulled it in. Oh my God. Those are like the worst possible carburetors you could put on this thing. Oh Lord, they're vacuum secondary. Oh boy. About the time I started digging into Chumpy's 55, buckwheat rolls in. What's wrong with this bucket of turds? If I were you, I would proceed directly to A1 Auto Parts in Buckeye Lake and lock this shit in today. <laughs> you saying I could beat him with the Model A stock? This thing's got freaking problems, dude. Well, Chump's been working on it. That's a spark plug. Now don't be sabotaging anything now. That'd be. Wait a minute. Why am I working on this <laughs> thing? The car clearly has a loose spark plug someplace. So Buckwheat and I start investigating. And it didn't take long for us to find a smoking gun. Number seven, the hardest plug to get to, had not been tightened all the way. And it's been blowing gasoline out all over the spark plug boot and potentially could have caught the car on fire. So me and Buckwheat load up in the Malibu and head down to Mark's to explain to him the problem that we found. All the plugs are fouled and number seven was obviously loose. And of course, Buckwheat couldn't wait to ask Mark why he didn't tighten the spark plug. Are you ready to race? Well, I... I... I'm waiting for a report. Oh, here's your report. Oh, what's Somebody that? Somebody doesn't know how to tighten spark plugs. What? What's wrong? What's that? That's the number seven spark plug. The damn thing oh. was loose. It's been blowing fuel out all over the how spark the plug sock. What could have been a fire hazard? Don't look at me. You're yeah. the one that worked on it. Well, well I don't understand that. But I, I don't have you, a lift. I asked you when you replaced the rockers if you're qualified. See, I had to try to get it from the top. And you, did you get it from the bottom? No. Oh, you got it from the top? Yeah. Did you have to disconnect the clutch linkage and stuff? No. Oh. Well, some well, of see, us I... aren't pregnant. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that looks bad. I don't even want to want to have that on film. Well, that's the one that was hissing at us oh, when we cranked it over. Was that the compression pisser? Yeah. Oh, okay. I knew there was something in there doing something weird. Well, according to Buckwheat, he's ready to lock this race in today. Yeah. Well, I got to. I need to. I've I've consulted with my counsel. Oh, for I, Christ! I Already? To, yes. Because there was a statement made last night about maybe detuning, and that's that was like red flags all over the place. <laughs> So, how can I, I detune it any farther than well, it is right now? Well, I'd say we made a big step forward, but I, I could still well, go back. Well, we could still go back. Well, we could. We could do some Maybe other. you we better could, call your could, legal counsel. I did. I called him, but I can get him back on the phone. Yeah, you better it, dial his ass I'm up. Because right uh, Buckwheat's ready today. So, Mark dials up his attorney and gets him on FaceTime so we can all have a little chat about what's about to happen. Yeah, there is no. De you can't yeah. possibly detune it any farther than it, what it is well, right I, now. I could mount a well, Briggs and Stratton in it. You're correct. You're correct. With proper documentation, you cannot make it any slower than it already is. So, uh, what me and my client have discussed is that you will document the current timing 
of the vehicle and the current fuel pressure and things. Whoa, 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 whoa. And you will document where you deliver the vehicle back so we know that we're not getting slowed down here. <laughs> you haven't seen Correct. the video yet. Look. Correct. Oh, my God. Standard, typical attorneys. You don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know how bad it... I can't possibly... The only way I could detune it is to park it uphill and tell him he's got to race it with just the starter. That would be detuning it. Other than that, you can't make it any worse. Well, it's a concern of my clients, so I have to... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I... And like It ran fine, like two weeks ago so it was oh whoa video. whoa whoa you're trying what? to throw this on me now no, no it just ran fine i'm just saying it it it, it ran fine a couple weeks ago now it don't run fine but i know it, it was did on you, video what did you put but some it, of your parts on it yeah well i might have but i did have a <laughs> did, did you work on it uh, no i didn't touch it but we knew the problem with carburation it's well bucko's already had his hands on it this morning Let's see <laughs> so you're saying okay. that? Hey, I'll go home, no problem. So you're saying that buckwheat's not allowed to work on this thing? I don't know. That seems like a bigger conflict of interest than you are. Yep, I agree. Should I document all this? Can we put it on a legal it's pad? It's on Is, okay. So well, we, but I should write stuff on legal pads too. I feel like I approve of Steve working on the vehicle and uh, Bill working on the vehicle, but I don't know that I would approve of. Uh, <laughs> he just screwed your client. <laughs> when I got back to the house, Tanner helped me put eight new spark plugs in Mark's 55, and I backed it outside to start working on the carburetors. The first thing I did was adjust the idle mixture screws and balance out the idle speed between the two carburetors. This made a drastic improvement in idle quality and the way the engine fired up. However, it still got a problem. I know that this thing had race gas in it the last time I rode in it, and it stinks like pump gas now. Mark tells me that this engine has 12 to 1 compression, and I know from numerous past experiences what high compression engines sound like and run like on pump gas. And the way this thing ran yesterday, it couldn't beat the chicken coop. Not scared. It's got two carburetors. It must make double the horse pressure. You got two carburetors? It's a 427 with aluminum heads, 12 to 1 compression, dual fours on a Holly tunnel ram. I don't see why his attorney is so algae because he's 100 cubic inches more than me. Probably 300 foot pounds torque more than me. You feel pretty confident, huh? You're also 3,000 pounds lighter. <laughs> well, let's go for a ride in this thing and let's see what it does. You film? Sure. Boy, look at the seat belt. Sucker must be super fast. Two pumps. It started. There's the plus. Well, it's running better than it did yesterday, I can tell you that. As we drove Mark's old 55 up the road, I could tell as the race gas made its way into the carburetors and mixed in with the fuel system, it started to run better and better. However, there's another problem that we didn't see coming. Now, obviously, this is the first time I've ever driven this car myself. Well, technically the second time if you count the test drive that me and Tanner took it on over in Barnesville. I guess what I should have said is this will be the first time I've ever stood on the loud pedal on this car and ran it through the gears. It's also going to be the first time I've experienced something that I've only heard about from the old timers from back in the day. I'm just going to be completely honest. This really took me by surprise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all 
scared no it's not scary at all it's like spongebob what it's like spongebob how is this anything like spongebob are you scared of spongebob no all right well then it's spongebob it doesn't make any sense i don't know what to tell you it makes sense to me are you scared of spongebob no all right I'm scared of uh, catching an STD in the back of this thing. <laughs>all right everybody welcome back we got mark's old 55 pulled in the new shop back here it's starting to show some promise i mean it ran really good the day that i rode in it with mark uh, i could tell it made pretty decent power it definitely does make pretty decent power uh however i think the carburetors still need a little bit of work uh it sounds to me like the distributor still has a mechanical advance in it and in my opinion, that should probably be locked out. I don't know what the ignition timing is in it. I haven't put a timing light on it just yet. Been really busy with other things. But we're going to get to that probably next week. Uh, obviously, this thing has way too much compression to run it on pump gas. And the more we drive it with race gas in the tank, the better it runs. Uh, Billy's 55 actually did the same thing when, when he was trying to run it on pump. It was just terrible. Terrible. I've, I've had a lot of experience over the years, people bringing me cars that they, they blame the carburetors, the carburetors are a problem, the carburetors need adjusted, the carburetor this, the carburetor that, and in reality, they've got way too much cranking compression, way too much dynamic compression for pump gas, and this is definitely one of those cases. So, uh, as we move forward with this, I'm probably going to try and get Mark to start running it at least on a 50-50 mix of pump gas and race gas. Uh, we can't put pump gas in this thing, not straight pump gas anyway. Um, let's see, definitely going to need something done with the clutch. It may need adjusted, but you know, I don't know. The, the shifter in that thing is ginormous. It's like, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. And I'm going to try and talk Mark into putting a shorter shifter in it and maybe a different clutch. I don't know. We'll see. I'll talk to him about it. But he's definitely going to have to do something with that because Buckwheat still has a good shot. <laughs> if that clutch pedal stays down and it won't come back, old Buckwheat could probably still win a race for this thing. Anyway, Vicky's in here. She wants to talk to you guys and tell you about where we're going this weekend and give you the details. All right, here we go. Here we go. So excuse... Excuse my looks. I'm a little melded because it's like 99 degrees. It was today. extremely hot today. So hot. So like I'm a little droopy, but that's why. So let's talk about this weekend. We are headed to Kentucky to the Combs Airport, yep. which is in Hager Hill, Kentucky, yep. which is between Paintsville and Prestonsburg. Yep. As Gina would say, Paintsville. 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 I say Paintsville, but no, they don't say it like that. Paintsville. <laughs> Anyway, um, so Friday night, there's a rock concert, uh, like a tribute band that's going to start around 9 o'clock, and it's just kind of a, a relaxing evening, hanging out, getting pitted. Um, Saturday, opening ceremonies are at noon, and the racing should start about 1, and it will go all night. I think we were racing until midnight last time, so okay. it'll be an all-day all thing. Um, bring lawn chairs, canopies, umbrellas, umbrellas, canopies, everything you need for shade, comfort, seating uh all the all the things are they allowed to bring coolers i don't know but well you gotta have the <laughs> details about that. <laughs> all right so yeah bring lawn chairs yeah, and there, there are stands but it's limited limited and people like to just kind of line the whole wall and it is down. an airport so there's no shade right very so, little shade well the nice thing where my where the vendors are hmm. about four o'clock the shade starts coming over and then before you know it it works its way over the tracks no nope, so. they bush hauled all of it down no they didn't <laughs> anyway, I'll be in the shade by about 4 o'clock, so okay. that's the good thing. Um, and, you know, if it's too hot for you in the afternoon, wait till about 5, 6 o'clock, come out in the evening. It's going to be great. It's like $10 to get in, and if you want to get on the uh, pit side and get a pit pass, I think it costs a little more to go over on that side. But, I mean, where else can you go for 10 bucks and watch awesome racing? 
It's, it's going to be a great time. So let's talk about this. How cool. This is the very first one like it. Is it a one-off? I don't know what that means, but it's the first <laughs> one. It's the first one. Yes, it's a one-off. Okay. So, uh, and it's already signed by It's you. a Nitrous Express nitrous yeah. bottle with a Lightning 500 valve. Mm -hmm. And it's got, as far as I know, the only one right now yeah. with that label, yes. the Street Racing Channel label. And it's been signed by me, me. by Billy, by Tommy, Bucko. by Vicky. Bucko. Oh, <laughs> by Bucko. And I'm going to get Allison still too. Okay. And Tanner. Okay. I'll get everybody. But here's the deal. Come over to the Street Racing Channel tent. $5. Get a chance to win this bottle. And we're going to draw the winner towards the end of the evening. All that money is going to the Kent Rose Foundation. Very good. Yeah. Well, so, big thank you to Nitrous that, Express. I've got uh, a basket of other goodies that are going to go with it too. Mm -hmm. Check out this limited edition Kent Rose tumbler. Is that mine? It's got Old Man's Garage on one side. You're giving away my tumbler? No, you haven't touched this one yet. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> I had two or three colors. And so I'm going to have two or three colors of these available. All and right. the proceeds from these are going to the Kent Rose Foundation too. Very good. That's like his image doing the arm drop. Yep. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, the big wheel race. 100 big wheels are given away to kids. And that happens at 6 p.m., it is something you don't want to miss. The kids line the track from one side to the to the other, and they race down and back. It's, it's pretty cool. It is really cool. I still have to make 100 goodie bags tomorrow. Oh, my God. Yeah. So Nitrous Express gave us 100 miniature keychain nitrous bottles. I'm going to put in the goodie bags and candy and... Anyway. So come see us this weekend. Yes. Hager Hill, Kentucky. The Kent Rose Arm Drop. Heroes, Heroes and Legends. Heroes and Legends. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> what? Let me look here. Did I forget anything? <laughs> Jesus. Um, right oh, sunscreen. Did I say that? Don't pet June. Don't pet June. Um, That's June, the one with the little brown face. We called her little bear face. <laughs> little bear face. Don't pet June. If you see her, don't put your hand down. Oh. Don't even attempt it. There is one other thing. Oh, shit. Addie, for the very first time, she has her own t-shirt. <gasps> and she's debuting it at this event. Really? Gina Rose helped her design it. Oh, my gosh. It is. The, I've seen a sneak peek. Nobody else has seen a sneak peek. But... Gina got them all printed up, and they're going to be at the event. So Addie will have her T-shirts for sale, and that helps her get her Malibu fixed. <laughs> so that's it. I promise. Bye. See you this weekend. Mm -hmm.